What's up, everybody? Today, we're going to have a short excerpt from a previous stream with Kate Laufenberg, where he's going to share some juice. Fishing Wingdams Mississippi River. Think about this as Wingdams 101 class for you. I know the audio and the video is not the greatest on my old streams, but the information in this is worth listening to. The new streams looking much better. Better cameras, better lighting, better sound all the time. So feel free to check those out. I will also link all those secret baits that Kate talks about for fishing wing dams down in the links in the description below in case you're not sure exactly what he's talking about or you're looking to get some. In the meantime, prepare yourself for some wing dam juice. He's hoping he didn't miss the wing dam lesson. No, we didn't talk too much about wing dams yet. So high level, without getting into like super specifics, like what, I mean, there's, you know, from in like a pool eight, there are probably, I don't know, 150, 200 wing dams on that pool or maybe oh, more. I'm sure, yeah. I've never counted. <laughs> Hundreds probably, right? Like over a hundred for sure. Yeah, uh, for sure. How do you, I mean, what, what, I mean, just, you know, it, it probably changes from season to season, but like what are general things that you like about a wing dam? And obviously water level affects that and, and things like that. But what are some tips for like eliminating wing dams? Okay, I'm going to give you just a quick rundown. In the springtime, wing dams are almost almost 90% of the wing dams on the river are useless in the spring, pre-spawn. That being said, you've got that 10%. Now, the 10% that are good are going to be near areas that those fish are trying to get to to spawn. So they stage on a select few wing dams that are really close to spawning areas. So how, how do you find those spawning areas? Well, you look for areas that have no current, rock, hard bottom bank, you know, smallmouth like to spawn on rocks. They're not spawning on the rocks, but they spawn where the rock meets the sand, you know, that kind of stuff. Find a place where there's smallmouth spawning and then backtrack downstream of that and find wing dams that are near that area. Within By, by near proximity, uh, proximity, I'm talking like within a mile. You know, that's where you're probably going to target. I wouldn't go much further so, than that. Because time, of, location, location, location. Yeah, you, you need to kind of have that basic knowledge of where you think they're going to be going. Otherwise, you're just kind of shooting in the dark. Um, af after springtime, the wing dam fishing is a little more predictable. Well, actually, I should say it's actually less predictable because – like I've talked about with the largemouth, the smallmouth are the same way. Once they're done spawning, they just start going wherever they want. Like I feel like these fish have a range, uh, a range of several miles, maybe even twenty miles, especially when you're talking about smallmouth, where they just roam within that range throughout the year, and then they eventually will come back to the same areas to winter. But where they're going to be throughout the year, that fish doesn't even know where he's going to be next month because it's going to be dictated by the water. So basically, I don't mess with the main channel at all if the river's high, like super high. I, I do a little bit. Depends on the situation. But basically, you're looking for lower water to be on a wing dam bite. And that typically happens in July and August on into the fall here on the Mississippi River. I start looking for smallmouth on, on the – main channel in like late July, early August, which basically coincides with the shad. When we start seeing a lot more shad here because they're finally getting to be that two to three inch size from the young of the year hatch, that's when the wing dam bite picks up, provided we have that low water. If the water is blown out in August, they're, they're still not going to be on the wing dams. You're going to have to get in the backwaters and fish sandbars and rock points and stuff like that. But and that's because the bait is also not going to be on the main channel, right? For the what's most that? part. That's and largely because the bait's not going to be there either, right? The right. bait's still on those sandbars and those sloughs and well, and even if the bait's there, which sometimes it is there. I mean, I've seen times where the water was blown out, there was shad everywhere, seagulls were crashing on the shad, but there's just no smallmouth to be had. Because the smallmouth just they just have a current preference that they want to be in. And it's like a certain I don't know how to describe it. It's kind of an intuitive thing like that. I'm always just subconsciously sure. looking for, but when I see the right current, I'm like, Oh, this is perfect. It's like a moderate current. That's what you're looking for. It's a current that you can hold on with your boat. Like 
with your trolling motor, your trolling motor should always be able to hold you there. If your trolling motor can't hold you there, you're probably in too much current for a small mouth. That's just the way it is. Um, so yeah, that's good tip. If the water's falling, I mean, if the, if the water's falling out of out of the backwaters from being really high and it's falling super fast, I'm gonna look for wing dams that are close to like major outlets from those backwaters because that's where those smallmouth are gonna start showing up first. But if the water's been low for like several weeks and it's August and it's hot and the, there's a big time wing dam bite going on, like you're gonna have to cover a lot of wing dams to find where they are because they could be anywhere. They will just kind of keep migrating up the river and following shad and, and just living where they want to live. So you got to cover. I've got select favorite wing dam. I mean, to this day, every year I'll pull up on a wing dam that I've never caught them before and catch fish off of it. You know, so it's just one of those deals where if you know that they're really on wing dams and you're practicing for a tournament, you're better off fishing every wing dam that you can. So do you, do you think there's any validity to like scanning them and looking for ones with more bait or activity on them, or is that not really worth in your opinion? Uh, if if I don't have a lot of time to practice for a tournament, I don't I don't think I'd mess with that. I'd rather just pull up with like a crankbait that I have confidence in and like just burn down the whole thing and see if I can at least get a bite. A bite. Yeah. If I get one bite, then I'll slow down, and a lot of times you'll find out that there's actually a lot of fish there that you know. You catch on a Carolina rig or something like that. That would be, you know, scanning those wing dams might be something that you'd want to do like after the fact, maybe like if you found some fish, then maybe scan it and see like, oh, you find out that, oh, there's a section of the wing dam that's got like a hole in it. You know, that's why that was good. I've heard guys say, other guys like Brent Hames and guys that say that they won't fish wing dam unless they see a certain amount of bait on it. With their maybe, and maybe the electronics that they've got are so good now that that you can see bait on the wing dams. Personally, my electronics, I don't think I'd be able to tell you that there's bait on a wing dam. Like, I mean, the, the wing dam's like super shallow. And well, is, you can scan. And wing dams are not the easiest thing to scan, especially when, because you want lower water. So typically that means the wing dams are getting sketchy on top, right? Like typically, yeah. I mean, in general, you don't want – six feet over the top of your wing dam. You only want a certain amount of water going over the top of it. You can't necessarily like drive over a good wing dam with your boat. Sometimes you can, if you're trying to, and let's say if you're kind of just trying to scan it, if it's, if it's not directly perpendicular to the bank, it's going to block your view, right? Like right. And if you come from the bottom, you're only going to see the bottom side of it, right? You can't see over it. And if you come from the top and the current's ripping, it's really dangerous <laughs> to yeah. try to, without getting too close to it it's an interesting thought but it's not as easy as it sounds to scan yeah. we firstly i i also would think too that most of the best wing dams like if you're going to crack them on a wing dam those fish are in two to three foot of water and they're usually on basically on top of the ring on, on top of the wing dam or at least they might not be sitting on top of the wing dam but that's where your bite is going to come is when your bait is going over the top of the wing dam to me, if I'm driving on top of this two foot deep wing dam, like I'm ruining it already before I even make a cast. That's, I mean, I feel like you have to go around it, and that's not always super easy. So when you're approaching, let's say you're like going into practice and you're trying to cover a bunch of wing dams. Do you come up from the bottom and crank it out, crank it up? Do you like what? How do you approach it to try to like cover it quickly and get a bite? I usually start on the tip and just burn just something. Tip? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> well, it also depends on the water level. Like if it's low water, if it's low water and the current's low, I'm going to start on the tip. That's where a lot of times your bite's going to be. But if the water's kind of at a mid mid range, like a little, like there will be fish on the main channel. Don't get me wrong. Like when the water's a little high and sometimes even when it is really high, it's just more isolated stuff. But as the water becomes more high, I'm going to go further and further in on that wing dam. Like, Typically, a general rule of thumb, high water, those fish are positioned on the wing dam right next to the bank. Yep. It creates like that corner of current being blocked by the point of the wing dam. And when the water's low, they migrate further out towards the tip where they want to be in that heaviest river current. And the, the wing dam is usually a little deeper out on the end of it, too. So that's a factor. I'm going to look at the water level. I'm going to look at the flow. 
which is all pretty much just basically with my naked eye. Like I'm going to look at that flow and be like, okay, this is, this is good current, which again, I can't explain it. It's a developed feel. If the current's low, I'm going to focus on that tip. Yeah. I start on the tip and just usually like a square. Are you, crank are you just coming up from the bottom on the tip casting up? Yep. I stay downstream of the dam and I throw up, up current and bring my bait back over the dam 95% of the time. Okay. Now, if, if so they're working in till you feel you've covered the, 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 as much of the wing dam you feel based on the current that you're seeing. Yeah. And if I get bit on that crankbait, which is usually uh Spro little John MD is like my go-to wing dam crankbait, just like a little medium diving, small crankbait. And I'll throw a shad pattern if I feel like I'm around a lot of bait. Otherwise, I'll throw a craw pattern. I eat a lot of sure. crayfish on the wing dams too. And if I don't get a bite on that, I've got to move to the next one. If I get a bite or some indication of a bite or see a fish blow up or something like that, then I'll pick up a Carolina rig. And I'll fish mm -hmm. until I catch a fish or two. My rule of thumb is like if I catch a couple of 12 inches, like I'm just going to keep hooking fish until I catch one that I know is like a good fish. If I catch like a two and a half or bigger, I usually will kind of just say, okay, this is somewhere I'm going to stop, you know. Right. And it depends on like the river you're on, the pool you're on, the time of year. Yeah. How is it fishing, right? Like what's a good fish right now based on the conditions, basically. Right. Absolutely. And if you're in Illinois and it's a keeper, that's a good fish. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then you're already just bummed out that you stung one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>